Hello, hello! Perfidious Pete here, back for more glory and good times down in the gruesome grottos and grimy galleries of Perfidious Manor in Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, Brigand Wolf came a calling with his barrel of bombs last episode, but fortunately for me and unfortunately for the Brigand Wolf, I happen to have wasted a not inconsiderable chunk of my childhood years playing Kaboom on the Atari 2600. So, I have some experience when it comes to knowing how to handle a brigand who shows up and starts hurling bombs everywhere. In, in my experience, you, you, you get out a paddle controller and you spin to win, damn it. You spin to win. Uh, is it, is it kind of weird that I missed the old paddle controller back in the days when things were simple? You know, the controller I'm talking about, it was just one, like, wheel with a giant red button on the side that didn't even get used in most games. There were, like, four games that used the paddle controller and none of them actually used the button. It was it was a device that looked like it was originally designed to detonate the world's nuclear arsenal from inside the president's bunker at NORAD. Like, in my mind, I can imagine Dabney Coleman walking into a room with a guy in a gray suit and looking at him and saying, Mr. President, it's time. If we hope to launch a first strike, we have to act now. And then just forking over the 2600 controller and the president looks at it down in his hand and stares at it before giving it like a big resigned sigh and then slowly spinning a dial and pushing that enormous red clicker on the side. And then the movie just smats cuts to some stock footage of the Trinity test and fades to black. It's beautiful. It does seem a little weird to miss that giant clumsy hunk of plastic though. It, it was, it, that, that controller was basically a lesson in how to not be ergonomic. It seems like an odd thing to miss, but you know, nostalgia is an odd beast. Oftentimes you'd be like, man, I remember that thing. For example, take my affinity for Beverly Hills 90210. I mean, I know objectively that that show was, it was terrible. It was just real, real bad. Ian Ziering, star of Sharknado, was a major player in 90210, and yet... There's a soft spot in my heart for Brenda, Kelly, Brandon, Dylan, the whole gang. I just, I don't know what it is. I just, I, I, they, I, for some reason, they get me right in the feels, man. Right in the feels. Like when, when Dylan lost his dad, damn near broke my heart. Speaking of broken hearts, let's head down to a dungeon and see if we can break somebody else's heart for a change. It'd be nice to give a little addition to just getting a little all the time. We have another short apprentice mission. Could I get an apprentice mission that is not short? I would very much like to get some experience for Team Up and Coming. I really like the strays. They have a powerful dynamic. And Darkest Dungeon is just not giving me any opportunities to level them up. I suppose we could take them into a medium length dungeon, even though they'd be under leveled. If we did a short, they would likely survive. They have probably a little more stress than I'm comfortable with sending them into. Uh, we At some point, I've got to remember to name this Bounty Hunter. We, I, I, I gotta do it. But those guys are not going into the dungeon this week, so it's not really much of an issue. What else could we possibly do? What do we have on medium length dungeon? I mean, I know the Swine God is there, and you guys are like, Pete, you should go kill the Swine God. I'll get to it. it it's, it's, it's on the menu, if not at the top of the menu. It's not a preferred menu choice today, but it is still on the menu. We are going to need... You know, what I, one thing I need to check, actually, what what mid-level bosses have I actually killed? This is the, the question. So we got to feed, defeat the Necromancer Lord and the Gibbering Prophet. Is it just the ruins? It is just the ruins. Oh, no, we also need to bring in 16-pounder. Oh, that's going to be like a 69-minute fight. Considering this is our 69th episode, I suppose that's sort of fitting. We should probably try and do that. I mean, it's our 69th episode. One could make a mutual oral gratification joke about that if one was so inclined. I don't think I'm so so inclined, however. The Beguiling Siren and a Drowned Crew. So we need maximum rank in the Cove. We need maximum rank in the Wield. We already got the Hag Witch. She's the maximum rank one. So the only thing we need down in the Wield, actually, is the Brigand 16-pounder. And the Necromancer Lord and Gibbering Prophet. So we only have one mid-tier boss left to go, and that's the Brigand 16-pounder. If we want to fight the Brigand 16-pounder, at some point we're going to have to unlock the Brigand 16-pounder, which means we should probably do that mission. One more mission will unlock the progress. We're 90% of the way there. Let's just do this short veteran mission and try and do it with a team that's going to stay under the experience cap. 
which I'm thinking is Madeline Pryor. We'll get Anodyne. We'll get old Nick Fury in on this shit. Um, do we want to go with... Uh, hmm. I'm torn. Do we want to go with Toxin or do we want to go with uh, Mary Walker? We could get... You know, Typhoid Mary hasn't been seeing a lot of action lately, which is strange because she's a handsome woman. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say she's smoking hot in the classic sense. She's a handsome woman. A handsome woman. She's a... I'm trying to think of a good example of a handsome woman. Ah, let's see. Who, who's, who's Hollywood's most handsome woman? I and mean, right now, a lot of you are thinking, Pete, what about the lady who plays Brienne of Tarth from Game of Thrones? And to you, I say, no. She actually is not a handsome woman. She's downright hot. If you've ever seen her when she's not dressed up as Brienne of Tarth, that lady, she's a largish woman, and there's nothing wrong with that. She's a big gal. That's cool. She's quite striking. Quite striking. You should see her outside of her Game of Thrones role. She's an attractive lady. I wouldn't say she's a handsome woman. I would say she's straight up hot. Whereas someone more along the lines of like Amy Poehler, there's a handsome woman. Not hot in a conventional sense, but not someone who you would say, mm, no, she looks like Kathy Bates with a like some kind of bacterial infection on her face. Amy Poehler is a handsome woman. Not gorgeous, not ugly, just sort of also there. We need to adjust Mary Walker's skills, which is why I came out here before I started bagging on Amy Poehler. I don't know why I'm picking on her. That's punching down, Pete. It really is. Disorienting Blast? No. No, thank you. I do want to upgrade all of our skills with some of our few remaining coins. Nick Fury, you're all, like, leveled up, right? Yeah, except for Mace Bash, which I actively dislike. Uh, who's going to be the fourth on this mission? Maybe we just take... What if we just take Buffy? Let's Let's just take Buffy. We could use the cash anyway, and you're like, Pete, this is going to level Buffy. Uh, you know what? If it does, it does. That's fine. Then we can fire Buffy, and we don't have to worry about her anymore. Also, Buffy, you operate fairly well at a second position, right? Uh, all of your stuff except for Fortifying Vapors works out of slot 2. Do you have an ability that works out of slot 2? Because I would switch to it if you do. Yes, you do. Let's get rid of Fortifying Vapors then and go to get down. Buffy knows how to shake a leg. She'll get down. She'll break you off something. She'll take you to the spring fling dance. We have a lot of level 3 gear going in this. Mary Walker, Fury, Pryor. You know, Mary Walker's really the only person here who's sort of undergeared. And I find myself surprisingly comfortable with that. Maybe we take Patrick Mulligan, though, because now that I'm thinking about it, leveling up a Plague Doctor would objectively be a good... Yeah, we're going to do that. I want a Plague Doctor who is higher level, actually. So let's get Mulligan in and hope that we can get him one step closer to the edge, Lincoln Park style. Let's go Provision. Trinkets, Pete. Don't forget your trinkets. Trinkets here. Get your trinkets. Don't forget your trinkets. Every idiot forgets a trinket. You don't want to wind up like a perfidious Pete. No, don't be like a Pete. Remember your trinkets. Trinkets extra. Get your trinkets. Uh, it's sort of like a discourteous newsboy who just points out your specific faults in an effort to get you to buy a newspaper. It does seem like a remarkably effective strategy, I'm not going to lie. Bonus damage and high torch light, bonus speed, bonus dodge. I mean, that 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 is good for almost every single person you could put it on. Bonus dodge, bonus speed in high torch light. If you're doing high torch light runs, it doesn't really have drawbacks. The only drawback here is we can get, I think, more dodge out of other things. So we're going to put all of the dodge we can get on old Nick Fury here. Two speed, eight dodge. Yes, we want all of the dodge. 28 dodge. You're saying, Pete, that's a lot of dodge. It's actually not that much dodge. I would love to find a way to get more. This does have bonus damage, though. Ah, you take extra stress damage, and this guy's going to be getting hit with enough stress attacks, I think. We probably don't need to double up on that. That's good. All right, don't, don't push our luck. Nick Fury has a little more stress than I'm sort of comfortable going in the dungeon with anyway. What else have we got? Buffy, uh, you're going to be carrying the Ancestor's map, because that's one of the things that you just do as a job. I could give you the Candle of Life, but that seems pointless, because I don't even have your heal equipped. Book of Holiness? Eh. Plus four speed? Uh, sure, this will give you a chance to make Nick Fury guard you, I suppose. There's that. Plague Herb, plus 40% Blight skill chance. I do like that. We always go with the Blasphemous Vial because it gives us huge accuracy, bonus stun, bonus blight. We take a ton more stress damage, which admittedly is not great, but it's not the end of the world either. Didn't we roll with, like, the Hags Ladle last time? I think we did. Is the Hags Ladle better? Where is the Hags Ladle? Here it is. 25% blight, resist, disease resist, bonus blight skill chance, 25%. We have another item that's better. We could just go... You know what? I will take a 5% HP penalty for plus 40% Blight chance. 
Yeah, that's fine. It leaves Patrick Mulligan with a shocking lack of hit points, but I think he's going to be okay. Why is his dodge down? Oh, are you? Uh, clumsy's real shitty. Okay, when we get back, we're getting rid of that clumsiness. That we cannot abide. I will not have clumsy troopers, mostly because being clumsy will get you dead, and I would prefer you not to be dead. Here's my other healing item. There we go. Nothing fancy out of our Vestal. We have a fairly stock kit of Vestal items. We take the same ones every time because, you know what? The I didn't I didn't buy provisions at all. Good work, Pete. Nice job. Remember that news kid just a minute ago? Extra, extra, don't forget your trinket. Yeah, he distracted you. You didn't listen to the newsboy down the street who was like, extra, extra, don't forget your food. He, well, actually, he'd be more like a hot pretzel guy. He'd be like, pretzels, get your hot pretzels, hot pretzels here. Hey, pretzels, who wants them? We got them. Ah, uh, we have no torches. We also have to explore 90% of rooms, and we're going to have to backtrack. That means we'll be doing this in the stinky, inky darkness. That's real shitty. So we get to skip one room. Well, I think we go towards the hall. Uh, man, we might ultimately wind up abandoning this mission. Pretty. St I don't. I don't. I don't have shovels. Victim to the spreading corruption. Malformed. There, there. There are obstacles everywhere, and I have no shovels because I'm I'm the world's dumbest man. Like, we have to dig our way through another one of those. We can't camp because this is a short mission. Also, digging our way through that... Yeah, killed our torchlight, too. That's that's delightful. This uh, this this feels like it's going to be a great mission. It, it feels like it's going to be real, real solid. So we should go do this fight while we still have some manner of light left because we're going to be we're going to be rolling pure darkness here very, very shortly. We really need the dungeon to kind of toss us a bone on this one. I'm not going to lie. So let's get our shit down, please. Actually, protect me, Nick Fury. You must save me from myself and my own stupidity. Nick Fury, we need you to be doing all of the criticals ever because it's the only way we're going to possibly get any sort of stress relief. Sweet dodge, sweet critical strike back. Four crit. Okay, good stress relief. Do it again. Oh, he dodged that one. That's okay. We only took two damage. Uh, we could poison the dog. I think we go for the heal, actually. We're going to have no trouble killing this dog. He has very little health. I think we'll be able to get him. Yeah, see, there you go. Anadine is going to drop a massive crit on his face and get herself some stress relief and get us a little bit of cash, too. Really? You think this expedition promises success, Mr. Nader? You and I are looking at very fucking different missions. That's all I got to say. This mission promises catastrophe. That's what it promises. Catastrophe and nothing but. We're going to get ganked by the Shambro. <gasps> a torch. You must know what is within. Yes, because you realize we're out of torch light and we have to have a torch of some variety. Also a thousand gold. I'm saving this torch for a critical moment. Yeah, we're going to be getting surprised all over the place. It's not that bad that we get surprised because we have several troopers who work well out of a couple different positions. Nick Fury, please guard Buffy. We've got some people who can work out of multiple locations to make it not terrible. We're reposting and we're marked. Please bite Colonel Fury. Yeah, that's right. Bring Oh, Colonel Fury bringing a Fury. He's blighted, but that's fine. We can fix that. Don't worry, Colonel Fury. We'll patch you up. Ouch. The, str the stress from the critical is most unfortunate. The monsters are going to be in criticals like crazy. Players also have very high enhanced critical chance, but the amount of stress you take for getting critical is nowhere near the amount of stress you reduce from tossing criticals. It's a zero-sum game. Um, I mean, you might as well just kill this man. I don't want to take any chance of him getting another swing. I really don't. Please uh, reset the party back to its default order. Thank you. And we're black as pitch. This, this is extraordinarily dangerous. On the plus side, our scouting is out of control. You've got to be shitting me. The one time I forget shovels is the one time there's a barrier in literally every fucking possible direction. Oh, great. It's the Shambler. Well, this is probably the end of this run, then. Um, let's have you get guarded by Colonel Fury. Once again, we're fighting the Antiquarian. We're fighting the Shambler with an Antiquarian on board. This historically has not gone well for us in the past. 
And by that, I mean it has gone just monstrously terribly every single time we've tried it. Here comes the undulating whirlwind. We did get a little slap back for that. We have nobody who's going to be able to kill these clapper claws. And our Vestal can move back a whopping total of one position every time. Brilliant. We could give ourselves a huge speed boost. Alternatively, we could throw some festering vapors, or we could just try and do some damage. Hmm. Wait, you have festering. Throw more blight damage at that guy, please. Let's just stack a bunch of blight on a shambler and hope to kill him that way. Patrick Mulligan takes six. He's going to take another six. These guys can't hit the front rank, I think, which is why they're you, you've got to back up. If you back, you can't back up. You, you can't, you literally can do nothing here. Brilliant. That's, uh, that's good. So we've got to, we've got to do this then. We can't restore our party to the proper order until we can get a situation where people can start contributing. I, God damn this shambler. We knew it was going to happen. It was always going to happen. The second we walked in here without a torch, I knew we were going to wind up. No, that's fine. Don't ever hit anybody else. Just the one guy is probably fine. We really only need you to hit the one enemy. It's it's it's, it's okay. Just just keep pounding on the one guy over and over. Dumsy will clap or claw. Well, we're gonna be completely freaked the shit out. Uh, get rid of your own bleeding and also heal yourself, Patrick Mulligan. Which sucks because that means you're not doing damage. We definitely need you doing damage. Keep the repost up, Nick Fury. I don't know why I'm even trying to fight this. This is the point at which I should be be uh, run. I should be running away right now. It should just be like, uh, we, everybody needs to flee at maximum available speed. Although that heal helped us quite a bit. And the reason we should flee, though, is it's gonna be, it's gonna be the stress more than anything else. Once again, this man has managed to completely fuck our party. We're selfish. We need to leave now. Self-preservation is paramount at any cost. <sighs> this is what happens when you forget trinkets. On the plus side, nobody got a virtue. Let's look at, let's try and find some positives. This situation is about as bad as it could get. Let's look at what positives exist. The positives so far that exist is nobody got a virtue. If they had gotten a virtue, that shot would have somehow killed it. This, this stress is out of control. Yeah, we're done. I'm not getting these guys killed. This is why you don't, this is why you remember to provision before you go into the dungeon. This right here. Clapper claw. We're just... We can't do anything. We don't even get turns, I guess. 19 damage. And Buffy is free. Unbelievable. Every single person now is afflicted. Oh, this is great. Let's uh let's just go now. Can can I get a turn, please? I hate everything. Oh well, that's fucking yeah, we're done. By abandoning this quest. This is this is awful. That cost us a billion dollars because now we have to put stress relief on like five high rank troopers. We got jack shit out of it and walked out of the dungeon with 4,000 gold. Hopeless, selfish, fearful, selfish. Yeah, I deserve that. You know what? It's just... Ugh. Oh, yeah, fine. Let's get eight trillion fucking crippling things, too. On the plus side, at least we managed to get rid of Curious. We got to get rid of anything that gives us minus 20 dodge. Fear of Beast replaced Tuckered out. Thick blood and Pluto mania. I'm not even sure why this is considered a positive quirk, honestly. We're also bulimic. Yeah, that will fix ourselves. And you have a blue domania mad Northern Empire. Yeah, you know, I feel pretty fucking dirty after this mission as well. I'm not gonna lie. I can see why you might be on a quest for cleanliness and holiness and godliness. This was a There is indeed. That mission put the low and blow. That's what it did. Yeah. Forgotten lore. Antique Roadshow. Yeah, I'm desperate to get another uh another another Buffy Summers. Yeah, definitely. Silver Sable had a nine on the town, though, and she's no longer hopeless. That's fantastic. How much, uh, how many trillions of gold is it going to cost me to get rid of these afflictions? All of the trillions, right? I'm, ugh, I'm, I'm just, ugh, I did, I, I, mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Patrick Mulligan, please get drunk. Madeline Pryor, what will you do? You're not allowed to visit the brothel, but anything else seems okay. Well, let's just have you go do whatever is cheap. Cloister. Cheap, I'm sold. Nick Fury, I think we're going to send you to the sanitarium because your little case of the shit's there. That we got to fix. Also, fixing diseases is not cripplingly expensive. That'll give us a chance to replenish our coffers somewhat. 
Honestly, I'm tempted to let Buffy... Just, she, she, the, the girl is... She's a walking fucking jinx. That's all it is. She's a walking calamity. Every time we take an antiquarian into the dungeon, something hell, some, something terrible happens. Every single time. And usually a terrible thing is just, I do something stupid, but that's, that's also pretty much the bad thing that happens on every mission, is that I do something stupid. <sighs> all right. Tranquility at last. Yeah, go eat a dick, Buffy. You cost me a lot of money here. Uh, we actually lost money on that mission, got no experience. I feel terrible about myself for being a monumentally stupid person. This is great. This is just what uh, this is just what my self-esteem needed today. Thanks. We're also no closer to unlocking things in the cove, so double thanks. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. You know what? I'm going to go shrive myself the way I need to be shriven. I think I'll get out the Salise and maybe do a little self-flagellation as well. I don't... <sighs> I deserve it. I need to be punished for this performance. I really do. I'm, I'm going to go handle that. If you enjoyed the episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Of course, your support does really mean a lot. And if you'd like to watch me be, I, you know, it, it's like I have suffered head trauma or something. It, it's like somebody came in before I recorded this episode and just whacked me right in the back of the head with a shovel. And I've been staggering around just be like, oh, yeah, fight the shambler. I'm just confused and out of it. I'm going to go find my mysterious shovel-wielding assailant. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.